Welcome to the very first Power Hour. We are so excited to have you. My name is Lacey Stockton. I am your Power Hour, Power, Power Hour host. The silent H on that one. And today we have Scott Stanford, our commercial energy advisor and former home builder who is going to be joining us. So we're in for a treat. Chat in the comments. Um, I can see him and I will share your questions with Scott. Let's do this. Hey, Scott. How are you going? going? Good. How are you? Dude, I'm loving the flowers. I like I like the setup. Backside. Backside hillside. Right on. Yeah, it's it's wildflower season for sure. Thank you so much for being the guinea pig on our first ever power hour. Well, I'm sure Andy would have nobody else but me do this for the first time. So <laughs> see how it goes. <laughs> Andrew will be our boss. Uh <laughs> This is sanctioned. So yeah, no, I really appreciate it. So the point of the Power Hour, as you know, is for our customer owners to be able to ask all the questions that they have about energy efficiency, home improvements, which you know a ton about. You used to be a home builder for about 20 years. Um, they can ask questions about our incentives for our local businesses that the PUD offers. You run our commercial programs, so you're the perfect one to answer those questions as well. Um, and, you know, we also have some specialists on our team for renewable energy and electric vehicles. And so if you have questions of, about those, send them to us and we are going to have Jim field those on a later Power Hour episode. But for today, everyone, welcome. If you have any questions, just type them in the comments below on Facebook and we will pass them on over. Hi, Kim. Uh, I love, I love it. What question do you have about failing windows? If you could type a little bit more about your failing windows, Scott will, will answer those. Um, and Tim, you have a solar question about your house. Um, you know, the best person to ask is going to be Jim. And so I am going to send you a link to our power hour page. Jim is going to be on, on June 9th and he knows everything about everything solar. Um, he is our senior conservation engineer. And so um, I hope that you can make that one. So Scott, you know, windows are a really popular measure that we have. Mm -hmm. Kim's asking about, you know, what happens when my windows fail? Well, I mean, it could be, a, it could be that it's actually leaking water into the house. The seal around the window where it's attached into the house is broken. Um, could be that the, the seal between the panes has has lost its seal and it's getting, you know, condensation and, and stuff like that inside there. Um, you know, windows are one of our more popular residential upgrades. They, you know, they're gonna help with air infiltration for sure. You know, you get a lot of other non-energy benefits, you know, they, it can make it more quiet, you can tint it so it, uh, you know, makes it cooler in the house. There, there's just lots of, you know, plus the aesthetics of just, you know, something new on the outside of the home. Yeah, thanks. It looks like Kim is asking specifically. So she has a residential window. So in her home, she had new windows installed in 1991. So they're going on 30 years. At the time, they were pretty efficient vinyl windows, but they're just not performing as they used to. Mm -hmm. Would those qualify for her um, to get some rebates from the PUD? Uh, unfortunately, I don't. I don't believe so. I know for sure on commercial they don't. You know, if it's a vinyl window, it just it just doesn't qualify, which is unfortunate because there's a lot of 30 year old vinyl windows out there that, you know, the seals have failed or, you know, the argon gas has gotten out between the panes. And um, but it's just it's just there's no there's no prescriptive path for us to follow for that, to rebate for those types of things. For sure. Yeah. And I know that this is a question that we get a lot for residential. It's Kim saying, like, my seals are failing. Uh, I have some condensation, which I think we can talk about because that's kind of a separate issue to the window mm -hmm. itself. Um, and she's saying maybe for future incentives. And she's totally right. As technology gets better and better, the old technology from, you know, 30 years ago, those things start becoming eligible for rebates. As of right now, um, our residential rebates for windows, they're only covering if you have single pane, so just one layer of glass 
or if you have metal frame windows, you're eligible for um, residential and commercial rebates on your windows. But perhaps vinyl will come. Kim, I think it's a great suggestion because we get that question a lot. Yeah, for sure. On the question for condensation though, this is I think a common misconception. Scott, can you tell us about what causes condensation on a window? Is it the window itself or is there something else going on? No, it's, you're, get, you're, getting, you're getting moisture inside and then the heat, the vapor barrier basically moves and there's the heat getting, gets inside there and it gets condensation with, uh, the, with the cool on the outside and warm on the inside. It's creating that condensation inside the window. Yeah, and so this is kind of, this can be a ventilation question, right? Yeah. So is there proper ventilation in the, the main hotspots being the bath, the kitchen? Um, and she's saying that there's condensation between her panes. Between she has double pane, pane windows yeah, between the, the panes. The seal is broken between the two pieces of glass and that's where the, it's getting in there and that's creating the temperature change and that's where it, things are happening. It's inside between the glass. What should Kim do? <laughs> well, I mean, you can get, you, you can, you can get new um, IG or insulated glass units or you can just pop the unit out. You don't gotta take the whole window out of the house where they can actually just pop the window pane out and put a new sealed unit back in which is probably the way to attack that. Um, so, but hey, Lacey, you know, since it's the first trip out, guess whose phone's almost dead? Oh no! I need a phone charger, so. Scott, you gotta go inside. It's okay, because the next question from Chuck is totally not a you question. So Scott, how about this? How about you go inside, get your charger. We'll rendezvous back here. I can field the next question, okay? Sounds good. That guy. No, just kidding. Scott's great. <laughs> so the next question that we have is from Chuck. Chuck is asking, what is the latest on wildfires and utility lines being shut down to prevent power lines causing fires? And this is a great question. It's not an energy efficiency question, but it's all good. So we have, um, it's called FSOM Fire Safety Outage Management. So we have a whole team of people, not just at the PUD, but also with our wildland firefighters that are coordinating mainly in the Lake Wenatchee area um, to determine what the best approach is going to be to manage any sort of situation when it's fire season, um, where we would wanna mitigate any sort of fire risk. That's what's going on. So as of right now, the team, the FSOM, the Fire Safety Outage Management team is meeting. They're collaborating to see what needs to happen if there needs to be any planned outages, mainly again in that Lake Wenatchee area, perhaps later in the summer or not. And their recommendations, I believe, are gonna come out in early to mid-June. And so if you want any updates on that, um, you, can, you can always write or give us a call, um, just the contact at the main part of the PUD webpage, shalampud.org, and we can put you on a list so that you know and that you're updated about any outage management updates that we have um, once those become available. If you're just joining us, we are here with Scott Stanford, who unfortunately has a dying phone. So he is off getting a charger as we speak. He is also our commercial energy advisor. So he runs our commercial program. We have a ton of incentives right now for our local businesses, big and teeny tiny. Um, some of the most popular right now for heat pumps because the incentive kind of pays for most all of the heat pumps, which is pretty amazing. Scott, are you there? Yes. Hey, work. you're all plugged in. Great. I'm all plugged in. I had to run and get an <laughs> extension cord, but that's all right. You know, you can send in questions to conservation at shalampud.org at any time that you think of them and we'll answer them on the show. And we have a couple of those. This first one is from John. John had asked us about an old building downtown that he owns. Um, it's mostly vacant, he says, since some renters had left that were doing retail in the space. And he was curious, which upgrades can the PUD help him pay for when he goes to renovate that commercial space? So, so John, the first thing we do is we gotta figure out what is your heating source? Um, is it electric? Is it a heat pump? Is it gas? Um, you know, we have a lot of businesses downtown Wenatchee that are on gas heat. Um, and since we're an electric utility, that will limit that will limit some of the um, rebate programs that you're actually eligible for. Um, if you have gas heat, it's pretty much going to knock you out of all of our programs except lighting. Um, so that's the first step we're going to look for. Um, 
And then the next thing is I would we should look at your the, your heating source if it's electric, um, you know, because that's one of your biggest power users. Um, so you know, we want to maybe upgrade that first. Um, and we got plenty of plenty of help for you know getting you from electric resistance to a heat pump or you know upgrading your heat pumps um, to new or more efficient heat pumps as well. Um, from there, um, you know, air sealing, insulation, um, you know, any anything weatherization to your building, um, you know, which is windows, which you talked about earlier in this program. Um, you know, it, it's it's sometimes hard with with the downtown buildings though the way they're built to get insulation. So, um, you know, I would definitely want to go after air sealing. You know, look at your windows, um, and then obviously lighting for sure. Um, we've got connected thermostats. There's there's lots of different areas to attack to look at to look at and evaluate your your you know your older building there. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, you know, sometimes when we think about what things qualify and what don't, what doesn't, sometimes it, it almost doesn't seem to make sense. But really, what we're looking for is we're looking for electricity savings. And so, if something is going to help save gas. We don't we don't service any gas at Chelan PD. Yeah. We just yeah. do clean hydropower. Um, so we we can't really pay out any incentives on that sort of thing. Your gas utility potentially could, um, and you might ask them. Sometimes gas utilities do do that. But if you're running gas, which happens in some of the older commercial buildings in downtown Wenatchee and Chelan, I know, for those measures that would be saving gas, ask the gas people. If it's saving power, ask Scott. That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's us. Ghislaine got back to us. She is asking if there are any rebate programs for energy efficient items for new construction. And I would assume she's talking about new homes. If it's a commercial, if it's a commercial building, new, new construction, we've got some things for new construction. Um, lighting, um, ductless heat pumps, and heat pumps, even though it's new construction, um, we got programs for that, as well as we have PTAC heat pumps. So depending on what but that's going to be specific. Let me back that up. The, the PTAC heat pump thing is going to be specific to a building type, which is going to be lodging, you know, hotels, motels, and then um, assisted care living, retirement homes, that kind of stuff. That's That one's very specific for that. The ductless heat pump and the heat pump will fit all business classes as well as lighting for new construction on commercial. Um, residential? So our new construction program we have run for the last couple of years. We've gotten some traction. Some people are sneaking in right before there was a big code upgrade in February. So if you have your new construction permitted before the code change this fe February 2021, then you get to sneak into our old um, new construction program, which the details are on our website. If you are, have a building permit for new construction that is after the code change, February 2021, then we are developing a new program that fits with that. And for that, you would want to write to Josh. Josh is, as we speak, designing our new construction for residential for new homes program. Um, and that just depends on how much better than code your building will perform. So he's a great resource for that. So I'm going to go to a couple other questions that uh, people wrote in before the show to conservation at chalampud.org. We have one from Anna. Anna um, says that she's been hearing about hybrid water heaters. And she's asking, how are these things different than the stuff that we probably all have in our closets or basements or garages? Scott? The big thing that for us is that, you know, it, it uses considerably less energy to heat the same amount of water which is kind of what we're looking for is electric utility um you know they are different and they're kind of need a specific area you know they're a little larger than your basic electric water, hot water heater um you know and they and they need more space you know they need a bigger area around them the way they the way they function um i mean you can put them in tighter spaces but you're probably gonna have to spend some extra money to get it vented out to the outside <sighs> A lot of people put them in the garage because they work really well, you know, in non-conditioned spaces to start with. So, you know, those are some of the bigger differences between, you know, the hybrid hot water heater and the, you know, old standard electric one. For sure. I mean, why would want somebody want to get one? Because when, when I think about hot water heater, I'm like, oh, yeah, where's that in my hat? Like most people, they don't they don't care. As long as there's hot water coming out, it's a win. Yeah. <laughs> so why, why go hybrid? Well, mo mostly energy savings, I'm thinking. Um, and, you know, a lot of times, you know, the older homes, they stuff them in a small closet, 
you know, and so it's, it's been really difficult for you to get that stuffed in that small closet. But, you know, if you've got it in a garage or something, that's great because it's going to actually, you know, cool your garage in the summer, the way those things work. It takes the you know heat out of the air and expels cold air, much like a heat pump. It does, it's a heat transfer deal. So for sure. Yeah. I mean, in the right spot, a hybrid water heater is brilliant, right? Like I'm yeah. thinking of the wine cellar that I don't have, it would be a perfect spot because it keeps it cool. It keeps it dehumidified, dehumidified. Yep. It's essentially free cooling for this, you know, fantasy wine cooler yeah. um, exactly. or cellar. So in places like that, or if, you know, if you have, if you're a, an office building and you have servers, those things yep. are just blowing hot air, put a heat pump water heater next to it and you have essentially free cooling. So yep. there's really smart places to put it. Um, but it's not necessary that you have it in a space that needs cooling. You can vent it or yeah. do other accommodations for it. Yeah, and some some commercial buildings, like like you mentioned, servers is a great a great thing if if you can get it there. You know, sometimes it's easy just to plumb it into that area if you're going to move one around. Um, some of our commercial buildings have laundry facilities. They already have hot water tanks in there, but then the laundry you know gets it nice and warm in there, so that'll help cool that that space down for them. Um, so yeah, some of those some of those unique spaces, those things are really really good application. Hopefully, Anna, that, that answers your question about hybrid water heaters. They're a great way to save energy. And with our with our rebates, they can save right off the out of the gate. For residential, it's 800 bucks. Scott, you're paying for commercial up to $1,400 for these guys, which yeah. can make them essentially free. We'll pay up to 100% of your project costs. Yeah, depending on the cost. The, the cost of the hot the hybrid hot water tank is and you know it's it's steps so it's, you know got tier two and tier three are the ones we pay on um i think it's 12 and 1400 bucks depending on the tier that you have and that's just some efficiency ratings they have on those things so yeah it can be very uh very cost effective to switch over to those if you have the right situation so we have a question uh from kathy saying what is pud doing about bit miners and that's a great question because bit miners use a lot of electricity and our goal is to save electricity so it's kind of the opposite of the goal. And to that, Kathy, I would say um, we have some policies <laughs> at this super duper long <laughs> address here, schlampud.org. <laughs> My PUD services, rates and policies, high density loads. If you were curious about our policy currently for crypto mining and these high density loads are what we call them, you'll be able to find all the information there. Going back, some more questions that came in this last couple of weeks at conservation at shalampud.org. We have one from Jose. He was curious, you know, are there any DIY options that we have or do we really have to use a contractor for to get a rebate? So on, on the commercial side, you, you can DIY it. You know, we don't have any um, specific requirements that you have to use a contractor off a, an approved contractor list. Um, so we have a lot of guys that, We'll do, you know, simple, simple lighting change outs and that kind of stuff. Um, don't see a lot of DIY when you're doing a complete HVAC overhaul. Um, so that's mostly the contractors. And and so, um, but yeah, we don't have anything specific that says you have to use a contractor on the commercial side of things. Yep. Yeah. So you can install smart thermostats, windows, uh, your own insulation. Um trying to think front entry doors, all of those. Yeah, it's really just HVAC. When you're touching HVAC, it's a pretty technical build, including ductless heat pumps. We sometimes get the question about whether people can install those. Um, and the answer is, you know, performance of the equipment for HVAC in particular, so heating, ventilation, and AC units, really depends on how well they're installed and how well they're set up, commissioned when they're installed. So that's why we want contractors to do those. But for the rest of them, for residential, if you like to DIY, rock on. DIY, send us your application for a rebate and we can pay out on those. Um, we have a question about mini splits. Yeah, mini splits are the ductless heat pumps. You'll hear them called mini splits because they have one unit outside and then you can have different heads inside. Um, mini splits, you need a contractor to do it to make sure that they're operating properly. So we have another question here. This one's coming from Kim. Why don't you have a rebate for tankless water heaters? Scott, what's yeah, going we, on? I, I I get that a few I get that a few times a year. What what's wrong with us? Um, the majority of those are gas. You know the tankless hot water tankless hot water tanks are gas, um, and the ones that are electric they're pretty rare, but they're out there. 
but they use a lot of energy, a lot of electricity to get that water hot instantly like that. And you know, that's just going to be, if you can imagine everybody getting up at five or six in the morning and cranking that thing on as they jump in the shower, a huge load in our system, you know, capacity wise, you know, we're, we're just not going to, that's not where we're headed. So we're gonna, we would, we would prefer not to have that or help incentivize that. So we're not sure. Yeah, that. no, I mean, if you, if you think about it in terms of like if we had to put water pipes, right, you'd have to size those pipes for when everybody turned everything on yeah. full blast. And so when we talk about electric tankless water heaters, we would have to upgrade our grid so big so that if everybody, like you said, in the morning was like, boom, hot shower, we'd have to size our system for that. Um, and it's just not smart to build pipes that big <laughs> with electric. Instead, you know, if you're talking about gas, tankless water heaters, as we mentioned before, as an electric utility, we're encouraging electricity savings, not gas. But perhaps your gas utility, if you wanted to go gas, maybe they have some rebates for you. You can always ask your gas utility. I'm going to go to a question that we received a little bit earlier. Scott D is asking, our electricity rates are super low. So why is Shalam PUD trying to get people to save energy? There's a, there's a few reasons behind that. Um, you know, comfort and, you know, you can save energy and upgrade. We help you upgrade to things that might make your home more comfortable, um, help increase the value of your home. You know, we want our housing stocks to be, and our business to be, you know, healthy. Um, and one of the bigger things for us is, you know, our rates are so low because of the business model we have with the utility where, you know, we're lucky enough that we can generate our own energy off the river. Um, and so a lot of our power is sent out to the retail market and we make money on that. So then we can actually subsidize the rates at home for us here. So, you know, we don't have to actually pay. Um, we don't actually pay for what it actually costs us to to produce the energy, you know, it costs more for us to produce it than we actually charge you. But since we have so much of we can sell in the retail market, we can actually buy those down. So we have much lower rates here in, at home. It's one of those things where I think people think about it the wrong way. They think, oh, I have low rates. So why bother with saving energy when really it's like we have low rates because we don't use all of our energy. Yep. The minute that we start using all of our energy, it's sort of like parties over. <laughs> we have to, we don't get that subsidy. But more than that, you know, a lot of people, the reason why they're changing out, say their windows or their heating or things like that is because new windows are awesome. They make your home look super great. They work a lot better. They open, close, seal, all of the wonderful things that we love about making our home comfortable. And same for heating, right? People go for new heating because something broke um, and they're looking for better performing equipment. They want to be comfortable in their home. So we also look at, you know, our rebates and things like that as a way to improve the housing stock and the quality of life here in Schlank County. Sounds cheesy, but it's true. If our homes are really performing well, we don't have to worry about all these little things. And as a PUD that's community owned, owned by our customers, we're happy to, you know, pay out even just for quality of life kind of issues. Mm -hmm. So good question, Scott. I have another question. This one's a little bit longer. Let me pull up the full question that we got sent in. So Graham says, I live in my dream home, a classic craftsman house built in 1929. I've always wanted to live in a historic home, but honestly, it can be pretty uncomfortable. The upstairs bedrooms are super hot in summer. Mm -hmm. Some spots are freezing in winter. The windows rattle when it's windy. We already replaced a giant octopus furnace with a new electric furnace and AC unit, AC unit, and that helped a little bit. It has a double brick exterior walls with a gap that helps insulate, and the original wood windows with some storm windows that fit on the outside. But what do you recommend to help me be more comfortable in my old home? Oh. <laughs> um, those can be tricky because you're probably maybe in a historic district, maybe not. Um, you know, if you are in a historic district, you know, you're going to have to, um, you know, get things that make it look exactly like it's coming out as far as windows and what have you, maybe particularly maybe doors even. Um, but I mean, I, I would start with that, you know, you, they've got plenty of window manufacturers that will make windows that replicate what you have that's, you know, from 1929, only they're super high efficient and they'll help with all the things we talk about with windows. 
Um, oh, so you don't have to sacrifice the adorable vintageness no. of the home and in order to get efficiency. You can get efficiency and look the part. I would, I would, the older homes are notorious for having, for not being air sealed very well or insulated very well. Um, you know, a little bit of air between a couple of bricks is not the same as, you know, getting the thing insulated and air sealed up. And so, um, you know, you're going to want to go after that. Um, pretty large project to do the house all at once. So maybe as you renovate or upgrade rooms or, or this or that, you know, pay particular attention to getting the air sealing done and getting it insulated, um, you know, that's really going to, that's really going to help them make your house a lot more comfortable and, you know, make your new HVAC system that you put in to replace your octopus, um, much more efficient. I, I chatted with a couple that they, they had a house in the historic district in Wenatchee. They loved it. They completely renovated. And they said one of the biggest changes they made is that they insulated and sealed everything. So yes, they, they, you know, swapped out to a heat pump they have a smart thermostat, they made these upgrades, but it was really insulating that made all the difference because no matter how much you put your heat on full blast or your AC on full blast, if all that's just going directly out, you're gonna have cold and hot spots and it's a hot mess. Um, and so really making sure that your house is inside <laughs> by air sealing, insulating, and making sure that your windows are well sealed, it makes a huge difference in terms of comfort, especially for older homes. Yeah, the, the air sealing is really the key. I mean, you can stack six feet of insulation on top of your roof, but there's a bunch of holes in the ceiling. Whoosh, out, it's going to just blow out right, right out into the outside, into the attic, and it's not going to be doing it as much. So, but if you can seal the area and then wrap it with insulation, that's that's going to be that's the money. That's the money shot right there. And it's not very easy to do necessarily. It's older built homes, just the way you know the way they're balloon framed, and there's just it, it's it's tough, but it's worth it if you can get it done. So you, Scott, you actually built the home that you're in a few years back. It's a beautiful house. Great job. <laughs> and I know that you took air sealing to pretty seriously. So if you were to build a brand new home or you were to go and add a new addition, which a lot of people are doing right now to their homes because they're recognizing the value of having a little bit more space, a little bit more elbow room, how would you insulate or air seal a new space um i mean codes today make it you know pretty tight much tighter than it was you know in the 90s and the 2000s when we were when i was out there you know slinging nail, nails together um so the energy codes themselves have raised the level up quite a bit um i on my particular house that i built and i i kind of like a flash and bat where you know you i use a urethane foam and and sprayed a couple inches in the wall and then put a high density fiberglass bed on, on, on top of that. So, you know, and everything's caulked and air sealed and, um, you know, foamed the sheetrock on top up in the attic and over all the, all the walls, any penetration to the ceiling, um, you know, rim joists, all that stuff, plumbing, everything was foamed um, and then fiberglass on top of that. So th that, that makes your house pretty, 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 pretty airtight, pretty efficient. <laughs> pretty cozy. It's pretty cozy, but I mean, there's extra cost to that. I mean, anything out of the normal is going to be an additional cost. So yeah, but in your example, so you're saying spray foam, super light so that it air seals everywhere mm -hmm. and then go in and roll out bats. I can roll out bats. Yeah, I, mean, and, and <laughs> I can do than, that. And even better than that, if you can put like an R5 insulation board, you know, like a polystyrene over the top of that on the exterior, you know, that's that's really going to help you because know, you get a lot of cold transfer like through the stud like even on my house because you know stud on the inside stud on the outside and you know, you're going to get cold transfer you know through that but if you can break that up with some sort of insulation foam board on the outside you know then you're really starting to get yourself you know sealed up and insulated you know to some sort of alaska standard so <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Alaska, right here in Chelan. And you know, exactly. it's interesting because one of the homes that currently is going through our new construction program is a passive house. Mm -hmm. That means that they have meet, met such great insulative and air sealing properties that they get this, you know, that, that they're basically considered passive, meaning that they don't need this additional mechanical heat um, and air conditioning going in. It's, you can do pretty amazing things. Yeah. So I have another question here for you, and it is about some underfloor electric heat. So do you recommend or rebate 
underfloor electric heat. And this would be uh, for a new, new construction home. Uh, we don't have anything on the commercial side for um, electric floor heat. I can tell you how it in my bathroom at home and it's really nice under the tile. It's all warm. <laughs> Don't the only time you get out of the when you're walking around the bare feet. Like, can oh. I just, can we just time out? Like, Scott, you feel a little delicate. <laughs> you have like extra special ceiling and you exactly. got the underfloor heat in the bathroom and yeah. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> oh yeah. Take a few indulgences here and there you can build your own house. I, I don't know, you know, I would have to refer to Josh on that. I don't, I don't know that I've ever heard him talk about having any sort of electric floor heat program. Yeah. So presently we don't for residential have um, an underfloor electric heat. The thing with that is it's essentially resistance heat, mm. right? So you roll out your conduit, <laughs> they come in these like kind of sheets and then you can put whatever flooring um, that's allowed on top of it, often like a tile in Scott's bathroom or sometimes engineered floors can go on top of it. But at the end of the day, it's basically like if you took a, a baseboard and you unwound it and you stuck it, stuck it under your floor. Like it's the same sort of resistance heat. Yeah. So in terms of energy efficiency and using electricity. Oh, it's bad. It's I was a bad, <laughs> bad boy for doing that. Sure. Well, it's not, it's not horrible. For one thing, things that you can touch, right? So like radiant heating that, that you're physically touching actually feels warmer, even if it's a lower temperature. So in terms of like the set point that you have there, you might be saving energy because maybe it's not at 70 degrees, maybe it's at 65, but it feels good enough on your little toes that not, that's not, good not enough. That, okay, thank you, thank Great you. <laughs> <laughs> so you can, you know, you might have some savings in terms of that, but in terms of the actual technology, it's not like a heat pump where the technology is pulling heat from outside to heat your home. And so in that regard, it's really a behavioral question as to whether you personally would be using it in a way that saves energy. Unless you get creative, just some sort of a hydronic system and use a heat pump, water heater to anyway. We're getting yeah. You got like your pool heat. heat pump out there yeah. pumping water under your floor. <laughs> At that point, I feel like whatever rebate we offer would not offset the cost of your yeah. custom little, <laughs> little thing. So to answer your question shortly, we don't have a rebate for underfloor electric heat. Um, and that's mainly because the savings is a function of how you use it. If you use it like Scott does, you're not saving anything. If you use it like I would, you could save on your electric bill. If you have any questions for Scott Stanford, our commercial energy advisor, go ahead and drop them in the comments and he will answer those for you or I can field some of them. I'm Lacey Stockton. I'm your host of The Power Hour, and we actually do this every Wednesday at 530. We have a couple more questions here. Here's one. This one is from Caitlin. She is asking if the PUD helps renters with energy efficiency. Yeah, I believe so, especially on the commercial, commercial side. Um, most of the time, the rebate goes to the, um, the account holder. So maybe the renter's got the power in his name and goes that way. Um, a lot of times though, it's, it's um, on the commercial side anyway, you know, it's kind of worked out between the landlord and the tenant, you know, as to who's who's paying for it, who's getting the benefit of it, you know, and and so it, it, it can, it can kind of depend on that. Yeah, for sure. For for commercial, it's, it's kind of different because sometimes, you know, folks, tenants go in there, they rebuild, they add, you know, say commercial cooking equipment which we have rebates on or refrigeration equipment or things like that, that are definitely owned by the tenant themselves. And so, yeah, we can pay out on those if the tenant is the one on the PUD account. For residential, it's a little bit different because it's kind of rare that somebody goes in and replaces the windows, like brings their windows along with them to their rental. <laughs> and then when they leave, they take them away. So for residential, um, it's slightly different. It depends on what kind of rebate. Um, so a good example of a rebate that would work for a rental situation is a smart thermostat. Smart thermostats are super easy to install and uninstall. So if you were renting a, uh, a home that had central heating, you could bring in your smart thermostat, which helps save energy. And also it's just really cool to be able to set your temperature when you're away or things like that. It's great if you have a second home as well, so you can set the the electricity down really low, the temp down really low when you're not there, and then, you know, turn it up so that as you're coming into town, your uh, cabin is toasty warm without wasting a ton of electricity. 
So for renters, the answer is yes. It's all of our rebates are available for account holders with the PUD. Um, and the other big service that we offer are our energy audits. So energy audits, we have a lot of renters that just want to know, hey, what can I do? I don't own my home, but what can I do? And what improvements can I make as a renter to be able to save energy? And so that is another great way that you can take advantage, maybe not of a rebate, but of some of the expertise that we have on our team. All right, Scott, we have no more questions in the chat. If you have one, this is the last call. Otherwise, Scott is going to go have some din, din and then warm his toes on his exactly. radiant electric heated floor in the bathroom. Any other questions that come up over the next week before our next power hour, just send to conservation at chelanpud.org and we will answer those live next week. We have Griselda Gonzalez. She is our energy conservation rep and that will be bilingual. Same power time, same power channel right here on Facebook. Scott, thank you so much for joining been us. It's a pleasure. This is, this is so much fun. I feel like uh, we should just hang out like this, you know? I could wear my headset. You could bring your wildflowers. Thank yeah, you, Scott. That's my plan. Thanks a lot. See you all. <laughs> all right. Bye. <laughs>